I remember the last time I spoke to you around 2018, right after the elections, spoke during the elections and then after the elections. What do you believe happened during the elections? Why are you not president? I'm not president uh, because Mr. Kabila didn't want me to be the president. Mr. Kabila uh, wanted to hold the power, uh, what he did, and he appointed someone who could agree totally uh, with him, and uh, that, that's happened. So you did not have the opportunity to lead the Congolese, to be president, but you've been very active in the country's politics. What have you been working on? What are you doing these days? Uh, we have to prepare ourselves for the next election. I'm teaching, I'm educate, uh, educating Congolese, telling them that all issues we are having in the Congo, poverty, insecurity, all those issues are due to uh, the uh, lack of uh, legitimacy. We don't have institutions and the leaders who were you know, put in place by the Congolese people. Uh, elections are going to take place in the DRC. Uh, are you planning on running again? And if you do, uh, what are you doing to make sure that what happened in 2018 doesn't happen again in uh, 2023? Yes, I'm planning to run because uh, Congolese want to see me there. And uh, if they tell me that you have to stop, okay, I will listen to them. I'm trying to, I, I will run, and what I'm doing, uh, since day one, after the fourth result, I uh, ask uh, everybody that we have to go and change uh, things in the Congo and uh, have reforms. And I propose on May 10th, uh, 2019, um, you know, a solution, you know, how to get out of that, the crisis. What I proposed is every stakeholders, all of us, we have to sit down together and I agree on some institutional reforms. The reforms of the Electoral Commission, the reforms of electoral law, and some others. And uh, we have tried, we have made proposal on all uh, those reforms. And uh, today, uh, what we continue to do is to tell people that tomorrow, please, pay attention. Your votes should count. And after voting, you have to stay in the poll station and wait until the issued result. Mm. If the result is not correct, you have to demonstrate. And nobody will come again and steal your vote. So you're saying Congolese take ownership of, of your process and your elections uh, to make sure that whoever you elected is actually the person in uh, the seat of power. What is your expectation from the international community? Yes, I'm telling Congolese, yes, do that, but I'm telling also the international community, you have to do your part. Like the U.S. here, the USA has pledged $23.5 million for the next election, This, which is good. But by doing so, uh, the USA has engaged its uh, responsibility, you know? is engaged, uh, you know, is reputation. And uh, that means they have uh, not to wait until they give the result. They have to follow, uh, to scrutinize the electoral process. Mm -hmm. And if there is something wrong, if something is derailing, if someone wants to derail the process, the electoral process, I think the USA and the other member of the international community, they have to come and put sanction, take sanction to those guys. Mr. Fayulu, 2023 is coming. You are likely, I mean, you're, you said you're going to run. Uh, if you win, what are some of the top priority areas for, for your country that is coming out of, a, of this pandemic? My uh, priority is, first of all, to build the fundamentals. Those fundamentals are prerequisites for Congo. This is a country which respects the law, okay, state of law. And uh, secondly, the country with its integrity, total integrity. Congo should remain one. Thirdly, a national cohesion. All of us, we should be one, have a cohesion 
working together for the prosperity of Congolese and our country. And the last one, the fourth, is the integrity in governing the, the, the country, what some call uh, good governance. I call it integrity uh, governance, okay? If we have all these four prerequisites, then we go to some uh, priority, which are education, which are uh, uh, agriculture, because we have to feed our people, which are infrastructure, okay, and electricity, water, and so on. Mm. But the first thing is those pre, uh, prerequisites.